caught up at this moment. So uh, thanks again, and uh, welcome back. I see a lot of familiar faces and some old faces, and I love it. And uh, this is a perfect uh, uh, venue for today's lesson on then and now. Um, let's see, before I get started, uh, I'll clear up uh, one thing. Last time I did uh, technology, we talked about the Brunton Compass. You were correct. Uh, I looked it up. I had never come across the Brunton Compass Cadet. It was used in the Colorado School of Mines to teach uh, geologists how to survey, and indeed it was made out of Talk about cheap, oh, really cheap. <laughs> they did quit making them in about 1980 when, uh, when the company moved to Wyoming, uh, and they don't make them anymore. You can buy them online. For I have that one. You have a yeah. 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 really yeah. sir? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they sell online, uh, uh, on however you do that online, for anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars. If you got the box, it's a hundred bucks. Did you know that Brunton was the surveyor who laid out the Smoker Mountain Road? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Brunton, he was cool. Yeah, I could. We spent quite a bit of time on Brunton, and I just barely touched base. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing before I get started, uh, I'm using old photographs. Um, it's very difficult. I've done then and now programs probably a dozen then and now programs, and every time I try to find different photographs. It used to be very easy. The museum had about 500 photographs. Uh, <laughs> today we have tens of thousands, yeah. tens of thousands of photographs. So uh, my problem is I had decided to do a program, and uh, I got so bogged down, I had such limited time, I had to pick about 50, and they're not necessarily my favorites, but they sort of have a theme. So um, I owe a great uh, debt to the archivists next door, especially Anna and Megan, because uh, I go through their files. They're all online, and when I go through them, uh, I say, I need this photo, and an hour later, I have it. Uh, they're very good to me, and uh, 10 minutes later I say, no, I don't need that, I need 16. Uh, so after about 300 photos in the last uh, few weeks, since I last saw some of you, uh, I've picked a few. Ah. So, of course, the panorama of Aspen in the 1880s, uh, this is a pretty popular photo. It's uh, probably one of Henry Jackson's photos, probably 1887, just before the, uh, the railroads. Uh, no, it's actually right after 1887, because here's the bridge. Make this better. The bridge, and the railroad comes down uh, past Hallam Way, the post offices together, and the station's right here. Uh, so that gives you an idea. Uh, Aspen's a uh, huge uh, growth spurt was 1886 and 1887 in anticipation of the railroads arriving. That was our biggest growth spurt. We were overwhelmed. When you uh, arrived by train with your furniture for the house that you had bought, uh, you found that somebody had already lived. Uh, not unusual at all. They, were, they actually put cots uh, in 1889 after the Hotel Jerome was constructed. They actually had cots in the greenhouse for a while because it was so crowded. Is that looking towards Aspen Mountain? Yeah, this is Aspen Mountain. Uh, here's the Summer Road. Uh, the cob is right, uh, right here. And the Spar Gulch uh, is right there. So this is where the mining, the mining belt goes right through here and over to the Spar Gulch. Uh, Allen Lake is right over here. And that's the ice house and the, and the dance hall. Uh, that was the recreation center back mm -hmm. then. And it wasn't subsidized by the city. <laughs> <laughs> There's one big building that's cut off on this one. Uh, uh, well, these were, uh, there were a couple of ice ponds, and they collected ice. Maybe a more recent time. This one, this one 
one's a little more difficult to try to figure out. This one's changed a little bit. And uh, this is Aspen in its renaissance. Um, uh, this is probably, um, I, I'm having a little bit of a hard time because uh, the North of Mill building is not here, but the Little Mill um, ski building is here. It looks like we're just building the Fifth Avenue. The uh, Mount Chalet has been built and it's added on. So this is well after 1956 because that's when it first, uh, when, uh, when first started uh, building the Mount Chalet. So we're seeing some new growth and Aspen's changing quite a bit. Um, but um, you can get an idea of all of the empty spaces now. Take a look at all of the huge empty spaces. And look at the trees are growing back. They're starting to grow. So, and if uh, you looked at that first photo, there weren't any trees. No trees. They're in the mine. They're in the mine. They're in the mine. There were no trees from here all the way to the top of Independence Pass. We had seven um, lumber mills running full time in the hills, and we had uh, four planing mills making lumber for houses in town. So what you see as a forest today is what we want our forest to look like. Uh, even had you come here 10 years before this, there would have been all oh, 40 to 60 percent fewer trees because it was natural. Fires, disease, etc. Uh, so it was much different. Notice there's nothing growing down here. This was just uh, when the first prospectors came here, this valley looked like um, out by the airport. A little bit of sage, maybe, and uh, some brush and some grass. We brought in the lilac bushes and all of that. There were cottonwoods along the water, uh, but that was about all. So that's then and now. Um, of course, there's a period in between called the quiet years. And uh, you may know where this is. In fact, some of you were just at this location probably less than 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Anybody got an idea? Yep. Here you go. This is the uh, Christian Science uh -huh. Library. Oh, wow. The greenhouse is down here. Uh, this is what we call the S curve. <laughs> it's actually a corner, but I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Let me see here. 1930. So um, things were a little different. When, so when was 82? Brought when, in, when was 82 brought in and paved? Uh, they paved, uh, I'm not exactly sure when it was paved. It was paved in, in, in 1960, it was paved all the way to uh, uh, Pelosi's garage because he was on the Fifth County Commission. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it went down Spring or Galena. Um, and it was paved, and then this, the highway over the pass, they started paving in 1968. And uh, the streets in town in the 1950s, they would bring hot oil up from, uh, in fact, I almost put that in here, uh, showing them oiling the roads. Um, if you uh, recognize this corner, then you shouldn't have any problem with this corner. You just come off the Castle Creek Bridge, and you're about to read, ready to turn for the main street. This is Hallam. And uh, Castle Creek Bridge was just as rickety then. Uh, loads over eight tons. Please use the bypass. You had to go down to the uh, powerhouse road and go up. This is a little bit later. This is about 1950. About 56 or 57. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a Chevy, but I kind of figured out what the car that is. Oh, you could have bought this lot right here. It's for sale. Uh, no, it doesn't. But this photo comes from a collection that was produced. Uh, it was photographs of property that uh, Walter Pepke was purchasing. Well, so that'll give you an idea. Uh, it was part of the assessment of 
this property. So um, <clears throat> uh, today, of course, uh, this street is blocked off. Um, back then, they didn't need to block it off. I wouldn't go down there, <laughs> uh, especially in the springtime. <laughs> so things have changed. Um, I don't know, growing up in, uh, in, the, in the mountains, it seemed like every little mountain town had to have, at the entrance to town, a gas station. Anybody remember this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is the alley going to the Hickory House and the Christian Science Farm. Wow. This was Waterman's uh, gas station. It was built as a lodge. Uh, no, it was built as the gas station and converted into a lodge later on, and it's called the Agate Lodge. Uh, remember the Agate? Yeah, I got a couple. Yeah, it was still here in the early 1980s. It was still standing. Uh, also, we have a little bit of architectural history. This was designed by a famous architect, Fritz Benedict. So Fritz built that. Uh, by the way, the building you're in was designed by Fritz. Uh, and uh, the building next door, the, uh, I just found uh, the blueprints for the garage that was added to the Wheeler Staller House, wow. and that was designed by Herbert Byer. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. The garage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got Herbert Byer on the blueprints. Wow. Now, that makes no sense to me because it's made out of wood, not cinder block, and it has a peak roof. So, but I do remember talking with Chris. And he would say, because uh, Herbert was his uh, brother-in-law, and uh, he would say, we, we had these amazing discussions about flat roofs and peaked roofs in snow country. Uh, so uh, quite famous. But it, imagine coming into the S-curves and everybody stopped to fill up with gas. That's the waterman's that had the Yeah, well, it was what? Are those the watermans that had the ranch down valley? I don't know. I don't know. But right next to them were the, um, oh, yeah. oh, the Castle Creek cabins. And these cabins were still here in the early 1980s. They would have made great employee housing. Uh, this is now gone, and there are pseudo Victorians there. But just about every little mountain town seemed to have a motor port or lodge. And this is about the 1960s. Just about. <coughs> this one's a little earlier. This one's 47, it says. And then the S curves got a little crowded. Um, there were some, we, we seem to have flooded uh, in traffic. Uh, you have just come off the Castle Creek Bridge and you're headed to that one turn, the first turn on Highway 82. This is uh, 1960. Uh, 1960. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you can see we already have a little bit of a problem. Uh, the villa at Aspen. At one time that was the um, Villa de Lamour. Lamore. Lamore. famous. Uh, and, you know, there was a swimming pool there and everything. Uh, and then it eventually changed. Um, so that building. Uh, uh, changed to the Aspen buildings or the buildings at Aspen. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can see we had a little bit of a traffic problem. Uh, it didn't get any better. Oh. You think the S curves are bad now. Yeah. Uh, you think a few years ago they were bad. Uh, try 1974. Now, uh, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same, and we like to complain. Uh, being a former Porsche owner, this guy was smart. He's going to go. I like that. They, they have a little common sense. And this is that uh, villa again. Uh, it was right here. Had a swimming pool and cabins and had modern rooms that looked out over Castle Creek. Okay. So that's looking into town? Hi. Uh, that's looking out to the Castle Creek Bridge. Oh. They're coming in. This is the first turn. The Forest Service building's right over here, okay. where, where the cars go and try uh -huh. to get the lock. Uh, yeah, that, uh, tree, that tree is still there. Yeah, yeah barely. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's probably saved the building a couple of times. Uh, but um, yeah, imagine uh, it looked like that about five or six years ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long. Uh, there are some alternatives. People have tried alternatives. 
1978. I don't know if it's the Coors Classic in the 70s. Might have been. But they're on Main Street and they're coming around. And again, the Hickory House is right here. And uh, Main Street looks a little different. Since we're on Main Street, why don't we go down to the, to the other end and look this way and see how tranquil Main Street can be. This is probably. Um, it's dated 1900. It's probably about 1915 um, because there's not very much activity going on. Uh, in 1900, this was a very, very busy intersection. Uh, Mill and Main and Mill Street, uh, especially, was incredibly busy. But uh, obviously, you can see a few things. Uh, there were houses from here to the courthouse. Uh, this is the Hotel Jerome, and it looks pretty much uh, pretty quiet. The electric lights we've talked about. Um, this is the uh, Chitwood Block. Um, today it's a Mexican restaurant. The Chola. The Chola. The Chola. Uh, I keep wanting to call it the Chola. The Chola. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Chola. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, now we're into it. Okay. Yeah, I remember when. Uh, it's, it's I did a, uh, a paper for the HPC all 30 years ago, and they wanted people's perceptions and what people actually knew of the buildings. So I randomly chose a few people. And people always remember what the building was when they came here. Yeah. And you ask them, what is it today? And they go, I don't know. <laughs> So you can tell, and, and it's a game that people play a lot of times when we get together. Oh, oh I remember what it was. So, so I'm going to try to pull a few on you today. Um, you might take a look at the Lincoln Hotel. Um, that uh, is a two-story building and uh, was quite uh, popular, a little less expensive. The Hotel Jerome cost three dollars a day. Uh, this is what we call the Ellie's Building, which uh, uh, some people remember it as the Ellie Building in Fire Blue. Today it's a bank. Uh, when they remodeled it, the uh, city HPC insisted that it be repainted to Fire Blue. Uh, now it's painted black. Uh, so we've even lost that. Uh, they were to save that wall, which they did. They took the wall and took it out of town. And and preserved it, or at least kept track of it, and then when it came back, it was so badly gone, so it's a new wall. Is that so the laundry there on the left? The yes, room? this was a steam laundry. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. whale to wash. And, yeah, yeah, the whale to the wash is, is right, yeah, and uh, I've got a picture of the whale to wash here in a minute, so, so uh, give me an idea of what's going on. Now this picture is interesting because uh, where is it? That's uh, in uh, Monarch. Monarch. No, no, no. It's no, it's in the corner of Galena. I'm still on the street. I'm still on the street. Oh, on the street. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, Crystal Palace because of the El Cigar. Oh, yeah. No, no. 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 It's this it's is Main Street. Oh, it's not. Really? No. This is what we call the Aspen Times Street. Yeah. So this is. Probably 1918. Oh, hmm. uh, there's a question as to when this building was actually constructed. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the roof of the Sarvi house down here? Mm -hmm. Are you starting to get an idea of where you're at? Uh, I had to crop this photo. This is the original photo. Well, that's the part. I see. The lens is a little weird, uh, and uh, the museum does not have a, the negative from this. Uh, they have a, a print, and uh, they've done a good job of uh, taking care of it. Uh, probably the, the negative is uh, silver nitrate, and it's dissipated. So, um, again, this is probably about uh, 1915, possibly. The hotel is pretty much abandoned from 1894 through uh, until Mansur, uh, Elijah, took over, uh, went through several 
owners and the county owned the hotel for a long time. So it, it was not in the best of shape. Uh, Mill Street, if you go all the way down Mill Street, that's Mesker Ironworks. Uh, again, houses compared to the courthouse. The electric lights. Um, and this building eventually in the 1930s was a candy store. Uh, some of the old timers talked about uh, getting to go to the candy store across from the Hotel Jerome, and they refer to it as, and now it's called the Elliott's Building. Well, now it's not even called that. Uh, anyway, uh, kind of fun to see what it looked like. Now, if we go back to where the bicycle racers were, actually, this is down the block a little bit. Uh, the date on this is Main Street, 1925. Give you an idea, uh, there's no parking and uh, no traffic. Uh, the cottonwoods are about a third the size they are today. The cottonwoods were planted by the, uh, the people who came to Aspen. And there were at one time irrigation ditches up and down all of the streets. Cottonwoods uh, don't grow if their roots don't touch water. So uh, many of our cottonwoods have disappeared in the West. And, uh, as I said before, the town site would have been mostly sagebrush and grass, a few bushes, but the cottonwoods would have grown from Ute Avenue all the way down to the river because there was a natural spring and water ran down to the river. So the cottonwoods grow uh, along the creeks and rivers. Uh, and oftentimes you'll see, a, as you drive up the valley, you'll see some evidence of huge cottonwood trees that are all dead. Looks like they've been dead for some time. And you'll notice next to them is an abandoned irrigation ditch. Mm -hmm. So they just die out. They won't see if they're not in water. Well, this is Main Street, and thanks for looking a little hot in part, no? 1932. Uh, something special is going on. Like right? even, even the Hotel Glenwood can't, uh, free uh, bus has come and parked in front of the Hotel Jerome. Um, uh, Jay's not here. He's going to be the president of the Elks Club uh, in another couple of weeks. Uh, this is the State Elks Club Convention held in Aspen, Colorado in 1932. And they're going the wrong way for parades in Aspen, as you all know. Uh, this is the uh, restaurant today. Um, yeah. This was uh, Mrs. Van Loon's house. And she was a very old uh, uh, lady that was well known. Uh, this is the Moore Building. Uh, today, I think there's a pet store and a flower shop. Uh, it's still here. The Explorer uh, suddenly uh, doesn't have a second floor. It's kind of missing. It, and, and today, to the paper today, the uh, uh, Main Street Bakery. You can barely see it right there. Yeah, that's the Main Street Bakery. Uh, Hefke Park. Well, look at that. There's houses in it. <laughs> Empty Park was not a park way back. It was a residential area. Um, so that'll give you an idea of, uh, you can just barely see the Times, the Times building. And uh, this picture was taken from the porch, or uh, the balcony in the front of the hotel. Room. So uh, quite interesting uh, display. I, I'm not sure what's in the float. Looks like it might be a band or something. Um, probably late summer, the trucks and cars are covered with flowers. Um, but it's amazing, these two buildings, actually these three buildings, are virtually the same today. You said 32? 1932. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it's dated. And actually, that's what the... <coughs> If you go back and do some research, the papers have a lot to do about this, the Elks Convention. They, there are a lot of photographs of the Elks around town at that point in time. They had a very good time while they were And probably the biggest economic boom in Aspen for uh, probably three or four decades, uh, having this many tourists in town in 1932. Larry, I have a question. Mm -hmm. 
is, is that the, is that the, the, there was a brick chimney at the lixiviation plant? Is that it? Wow! Oh, yeah. 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 from the thirties. Oh my God! Good eye! Mm. Oh my gosh! You got it! That's, That's brilliant. brilliant. That, oh my! Oh, somebody's got a balloon. Yeah. Uh, you are absolutely right. I did not notice that. The uh, old world lixiviation plant out here. This was the the uh, tower. The smokestack, and that is 162 feet high. Yeah. Wow. Uh, when it was built, it was uh, considered one of the tallest towers. Uh, soon, nothing compared to the one in Celaya. Uh, Holden World, uh, Mr. Edward R. Holden, his uh, initials were up here, engraved in sandstone, and it was the same as the uh, design at his ranch in Texas. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Luke's Aviation went belly up, but uh, Mr. Holden was pretty low. Um, so, oh wow, that is cool. I love, see, that's the thing. You can spend an hour on one photo. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, let's update it a little bit. Does anybody know this one? Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher. This is between the locals' corner and the um, Chitwood building, the um, mm. Wachoma. Uh, Freddie the Fixer. He was uh, the Fix-It Man, and he was quite a character. He was a world-renowned saxophonist. Mm. He played jazz. Uh, uh, we have a photo of uh, a billboard on Broadway in New York. He is the headliner, and Glenn Miller is under him. Oh. Um, he came here and would play at the Red Onion with others. Uh, his son became a, a good uh, jazz musician as well. Uh, Freddie was quite the character. Uh, I think this one says, uh, he old, ye old cork barrel. <laughs> uh, he uh, uh, would go out to the dump. The dump was located where the Ark is today, down the hill into Castle Creek, or on Maroon Creek. And uh, he would go and pick up stuff and turn it into junk to sell. Uh, some, some of the old timers tell me, yeah, he repaired watches. He would take your watch and uh, he might repair it, he might not. Just depending on what he felt like on any particular day. He had a great sense of humor. Um, he once entered a float in the Winter Skull Parade, which was a toilet. Uh, it, was, it was it was political about it, Osman. I think it was vocal about the um, uh, diversion of the water. Yes, the yes, right? he was. And that's where the DM yeah. Um, yeah, he was quite vocal about that. And this was about that time. This was uh, 1950. And uh, I just so happened to have uh, uh, Ross Freddy. There's Freddy. And you can see he was quite inventive. It looks like he's got some sort of uh, clogs on to get on the uh, walk on the sidewalks, kind of like the sidewalks today. And uh, he's uh, taken a baby buggy and put skis on it. And that's how he would go do his shopping and, and uh, run his errands. So he was quite the creative character. A uh, very interesting man. We had a lot of those folks at that time. And by the way, this is just about, this was right next door to the Lincoln Hotel that we saw. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. hotel yeah. is now gone. Uh, As a prior floor back, did we see lift towers for my in the background? You could have, you could have because, uh, no, the, no, 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 these, are, these are electric wires here. No, 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 yeah, this is 1950. That, that'd be on the mountain. That's, that's the main. That's the main. That's the main. That's the main. No, no. Yeah, that was just a little, little toe on the nose. Oh, the, 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 the ski scoop. That was a little toe. Roll toe. Yeah, the yeah. ski scoop. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, things started to change. By 1954, we had uh, things going on on Main Street. This is. Uh, 1954, and the gentlemen here are stringing the Christmas lights. <laughs> and if you know about Aspen's history, I believe uh, this is a Caparella, this is a Malone, uh, uh, Madelon. Madelon, and I think that's uh, 
I think that's Harold Smith. I don't know who that is. And this is a gas station today. It was Connor's gas station. Uh, Connor's an old family. Uh, and it's still a gas station today, at least for now. It was supposed to be a couple years ago, but uh, that hasn't come about yet. So, uh, Camarilla, uh, Madelon, uh, those <coughs> families, if, if anything had to be done around town, they were the people who did it. And if anything had happened in town, they probably knew about it. Uh, quite uh, a family. There's a log cabin here. Today, this is now two stories tall. And I think the Hotel Jerome still owns that for four of the houses. Uh, but that was a, a motor wall. The Cortina? Uh, Cortina. Yeah. 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 The yeah. hotel yeah. 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 And then uh, right across the street is where today uh, Carl's Pharmacy is. But it wasn't always Carl, Carl's Pharmacy. When Carl came here, Carl was a pharmacist. And Carl maintained his pharmacist uh, license. Maybe not too long before he passed away, he would go to uh, pharmacy classes once a year to maintain it. Uh, Carl came here and uh, uh, eventually bought Matthew Drug. Uh, Matthew Drug uh, Swiss ice cream and a soda fountain. Um, I didn't have time to put in the soda fountain, room, but the gas station's right across you know, one of the jump cars to park there. So Matthew Drug. Um, hey, I started hopping in the 1950s. Uh, by 1950, we started having car races. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody remember Dr. Baxter? Jay Baxter? Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool dude. Uh, he came here in 1950. He wasn't very cool when I ran into his Porsche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 he came here in the 50s because he heard there was a car race. Uh, th they're not speeding. This is in front of the Aspen Times. Mm -hmm. Matthew Drug is still here. Uh, what they did was they had a Lamont start. And so uh, the cars were parked over here. The drivers were over here. The gun went off. They had to run across the street, jump in, to start their car, and take off. So they're headed down Main Street. So Main Street's beginning to see a little bit of activity uh, as far as car traffic. You can barely see part of the starting house back there. So, and again, we still have the uh, Moore building, which is right there, and uh, part of so the, the rice, Main where, Street Bakery. Where was the rice headed to? I don't know where they're headed to there. Uh, I, I think they went to the yeah. end the of Green. Main Street and they had left. <laughs> and they came back around, and somehow they wound up down at the bottom of Mill Street, because we have lots of photos of them coming around Mill Street up the hill and turning on to Main Street. So they may have gone down uh, Spring Street and down behind the courthouse, uh, something like that. I don't know the exact route. If you were to look it up in the newspapers, it would describe the whole route. And uh, great crowds. Everybody was excited. It was a, the 50s were a real exciting time. Um, and then Main Street uh, started to change even more. Um, there was a gas station on Main Street where there is a gas station today. This is the locals' corner. And this gas station, I know this gas station was here in 1950. This was taken in 1955 when um, I believe one of the Madelones bought the gas station. And uh, so they took a photograph of it. You can see it's taken from the balcony at the courthouse. And here's the uh, oh, yeah. statue. Uh, so notice that there was a nice wide corner. Uh, they kind of did a caddy corner back then. You'll notice Freddie's house is still here. Or, uh, Freddie the Fixer is still here. And one thing that's kind of curious that uh, people don't realize is here is the gazebo. Oh, was it moved to the back of the Yeah. Uh -huh. This gazebo was built in the 1930s. I think it was 1936 by the, the, the ladies of town, uh, the ladies auxiliary. And they, along with the WPA, financed it. And it was here. This is where the fire station is today. So we'll come back to that in a minute. 
But people seem to think the gazebo was in Pepke Park all along. No, the park wasn't there either. Uh, Pepke Park came along much later. So just to give you an idea, there's not a whole lot in here. What? All small. The building in the back. That's the grand building. That's the grand building. That's the grand building. City Hall is right over here. No. This is the brand building. And right here is Sardi Hardware. Yeah. This is uh, Club uh, Caribou. Caribou oh, Club. Oh, oh, it's right there. Yeah. Okay, now do you get your. Isn't that fun? Yeah. yeah. Is that the Wheeler? That's the Wheeler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the Wheeler. Look at all the development on. Yeah. 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 That's, that's changed. It's going to change again. Uh, so you get an idea. Is that still railroad sign? Uh, railroad towards the hill? And, uh, no, no. No, not that. Uh, to, uh, down the road, that long building is there. No, I what don't know that? why, what that is. Oh! No, I thought that was the swimming pool. Right? When did the tracks and the moon come on? Uh, the tracks were torn out in 1967. <laughs> Because the head of the railroad came up to officiate the last train leaving, and he came in his 1966 Mustang car. Oh. <laughs> I think the irony there. Yeah. The loss of the train and the Mustang. Uh, so, uh, as I said, this changed to the locals' corner in 1971. It became the locals' corner uh, up here. Oh, oh, that. That's uh, Aspen State Teachers College, street, street rowing. Uh, you had to be here in the 70s. That's sort of a homage to uh, the Historical Society that's trying to provide. When, when I do Cooper Avenue, uh, I don't have Cooper Avenue on here. I ran out of uh, time. But uh, when I do Cooper Avenue, I'll show you the Aspen State Teachers College oh, yeah. rolling. Yeah. You rolled a keg and you used freshman as a sense of humor. But this is the locals corner and the whale of the wash is where the steam laundry was. Yeah. Isn't there some interesting things going on there? Yeah. Oh, Main Street. Okay. This is where the ISIS theater now uh, uh, not the ISIS yeah. stage three I think now it's the UPS store. Yeah, mine for okay. Star Wars. This is the Playhouse movie theater. Uh, yeah. We still have the ISIS movie theater, but this was the Playhouse. But right, here's the trivia question. Why in July of 1977 are people lined up? Star Wars. Star Wars, you got it! All right, all three of my head. Star Wars comes to Aspen in 1977. Yeah, look at the, the, the there's no jokes bottles. There's a Mustang over there. You can't be a porno, there's no trench coats. Yikes. I have to spill my Anyway, I thought you'd get a kick out of Main Street. Traffic here. It's like the drainage is about the same. That still well, let's take a look at Aspen and let's look at another street. Um, we had enough in Maine. The, the other main street in Aspen has been Mill Street. And this is Mill Street. And uh, this photo was uh, uh, 1920, I believe. You can see uh, we have a lot of traffic. We've got three cars parked over here. <laughs> And that's about it. Um, <clears throat> Wagner Park it doesn't exist yet. Wagner Park will come all the way up to here and cover the whole thing. The Crystal Palace, before the one side collapsed, and that's what the Crystal Palace originally looked like. It was a commission house. Uh, this side collapsed uh, in the 40s. Uh, there will be a, just a slanted roof almost to the ground. Uh, Shaw's, the Shaw family, uh, took this over and they sold coal and grain uh, there. Um, this is the mother road. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. uh, the yeah. 
The fire tower is still standing. Nice. And this is City Hall right here, and the jail. And this building will turn into a lodge eventually. Um, but Mill Street is um, quite different. Notice once you cross Durant Avenue, is nothing more than a cow trail past Brandon Park. There's hardly anything. The train is right here. And there's the temple, and here's the train that's right through here. Can you an idea? So City Hall was uh, over there and not... Uh, no, City Hall today is in the armory uh, building. This was the armory. So this was built for the militia. Uh, it was built right after there was another uprising in 1887, I believe it was. Uh, people got excited about the Ute Indians. and So uh, we had a militia, and this is where they trained uh, inside in the wintertime. They could march around and whatever. This was the entertainment center of Aspen. This is where all the dances were. And they had a wood floor. This is where all the marriages were made. Oh, yeah, every, yeah, there was a lot going on here. Uh, and it was very popular until the late 30s, and then people started to kind of get tired of it. Um, a, lot of, a lot of fights. Look at the difference in runoff of you Hunter Creek before the conversion. Yeah. 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 No, the Red Onion is right there. That's the Red Onion. Paradise Bakery, Independence Square, Elks Building, Armory. Catholic Church. Larry Catholic oh, yeah. Church, Cohen Hole and Tunnel. Uh, Smokers were well. oh, I didn't mention Smokers. Larry, may I point out two things mm -hmm. that I think you missed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, gentleman, the gentleman behind me wanted to point out. Look at the flow. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 this is yeah. before conversion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to point out this. Right. That's the water line going down to the power plant the right, line. Line. Oh. right over here. Now, today you will see there is a huge wash out there. Yeah. This pipe blew out. Oh. Uh, Lisa, did we figure that 1918 was it? I think it was 1908. Uh, yeah, and that's when it blew out. So this predates. No, this doesn't predate that because I've got cars. Yeah. Yeah. Where was that water line? Oh, maybe my dates wrong. They had, if you go up Hunter Creek, there's an old municipal reservoir. Uh, you can see where there used to be a reservoir. Oh, that's and they had a reservoir up there, and this dropped 826 feet to the uh, Pelton wheels in the power house. So imagine the pressure that they had available. Uh, it was a pretty incredible uh, thing. The problem was uh, the lake froze in the winter and it dried up in the summer. <laughs> so uh, we keep thinking hydro. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what's worth? What county did the to the left? The kind of lighting went up a little bit. Come down. Yeah. That's a washout. Can you see? Oh, yes, that's just some. Uh, Main Street, here's the Hotel Jerome. Main Street goes right through here. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, the Catholic Church is on Main Street. So now we're looking north, south, instead of east, west. Yes. And you know, as Thompson Hardware? Thompson? Uh, uh, Tompkins Hardware is right here. Yeah. Okay, that is that was Kimosabi, and now uh, 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 that's Tom. Uh, it's it caved in when Fritz Benedict got the remodeling job. Uh, he thought he was going to to go bankrupt because he started the remodeling job and the roof collapsed, uh, and that's why we have open space there. Uh, and then the city decided to sit. Every building had to have public open space. And that's uh, no longer existing. Oh, the Delizics, uh, the Delizics are over here, and notice what they did. This is this is grass for their horses. Oh, well, I'm so far behind. I don't know when that meeting is. But they're just going to have to cancel. Um, it's Ladam Slayer there. Okay. So, so uh, another view of the town. Uh, and again, uh, the Hotel Jerome. And Main Street. Uh, yeah, Smuggler. 
Mother Mine. There are a few buildings left from the mill. Um, this is Mill Street right here. Here's the, the water, t the fire tower or swan, but the old city hall is still there. Uh, this is Mill Street. What year is this? This is 1948. Notice Durant, as I said, Durant Avenue. That's what? That's right. Now next next year I'm going to do another one. We'll do Durant Avenue and High Mill. But Durant Avenue comes to here. Mm -hmm. Here's the railroad. Yeah. 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 Which is on D. It's wrong. My wheeler looks like yeah. it lost yeah. its back half. Yeah. Oh. No, that's uh, that's the greenhouse. No, the wheeler. Oh, the wheeler? Yeah. No. Huh? No, it's all the there. Yeah, there's a there's a quite a, a ladder going up here. Oh, that's that was the ladder. fire. That was the fire. Escape. And there was actually a room that stuck off that side that was the dressing room. So yes. Oh. Off and that notice, west side of the building. Notice oh. the Crystal Palace, the oh, roof has collapsed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's the greenhouse outside? Huh? What greenhouse? Yeah. It was in the back. Yeah, fresh vegetables. Well, in the quiet years, people went to the Jerome and got their fresh vegetables. Yeah, I'm looking at where we are. And this is Mill Street again. This is 1925 again. Somebody took a lot of photos in 1925. So, a little different than what we experienced today. Although we do have a... a Mall, you know, and you can see Petri Park is starting to ship. Notice the Red Mound Ditch is not there yet. I know, but Salvation Ditch is. But notice the Crystal Palace. Look at that. Yeah. That's when Shaw's had it. And then, then there was a laundry in there for a long time before we uh, purchased it. And then the, the laundry moved to the opposite corner. So Mill Street, 1882. Imagine. 1882. Now this is a pretty critical time in the history of Aspen because Aspen began in 1879. Aspen was incredibly isolated. Aspen was had the same opportunity to fail as all the other mining camps because it was so isolated. Because it was going to take a lot of money. It was going to take investors. So Aspen didn't do much the first few summers. In the winters, it was pretty much abandoned. But by 1882, we had stagecoach routes over Taylor Pass and over Independence Pass. And in 1879, David Hyman came in and invested heavily in uh, some of the waters, including the Smuggler and the Durant. So that brought Abel Breed. Uh, a year after this, uh, a fellow by the name of Jerome B. Wheeler will finally show up. Uh, but by then he knows that this is going to be a success. What you're seeing here is a transition of architecture. When the camp first started, we had tents and log cabins. A lot of log cabins had canvas roofs. That's first phase mining camp architecture. What we have now is we are beginning to see false front buildings. That's second phase mining architecture. And then the third phase would be the stone, multi-story structures that we'll see with uh, <coughs> the uh, Hotel Jerome and such. This building over here is pretty cool. That's mm -hmm. the Clarion Hotel, mm -hmm. number one. This one went to the ground. Mm -hmm. And then the big one was built. We'll see it in one. But um, yeah, and, and as we talked about that when we were talking about fires, uh, the fire chief and the owner of the Clarendon Hotel were in a local saloon when the thing went down. Kind of convenient. Uh, but uh, false front of buildings are sort of unique to the American West. This is a very tiny building behind it, but the false front gives you a sense of success. Uh, you'll find this in uh, Australia. A lot of their mining camps have false front architecture. One of the earlier photos. Hmm? It's one of the earlier. Yeah, this is the earliest uh, photo of downtown that I have. Is that looking towards the river? That's looking toward Red Mountain. Yes. The Hotel Jerome will wind up down here, and the Wheeler Opera House will wind up about there. Hey, that's, uh, I'm Reginald Wheeler. I'm Reginald Wheeler. 
Is that that is, a, going up it looks, it, there is a road up there, and it looks pretty horizontal, and I don't know why. Yeah, I don't so know if that's a... It looks like something going at yeah. an angle. Yeah, oh, that is a road going up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Mill Street a little bit later. This is about 1886. So we know that because we have electric lights and uh, lots of electric wires. And this is the second Clarendon Hotel, which is three stories tall, has 110 rooms, has electricity, uh, quite, a, quite a first class hotel. <coughs> the Hotel Jerome is still not there. Uh, so uh, the log cabins, we still have a few log cabins. And this gives you another sense of the false front. Notice the, the false front is very impressive, but the building behind it. What's the cross street right in front of the Clarendon? Hmm? What's the cross street right in front of the Clarendon? This is Durant. <coughs> Durant? This is, oh, this is Ruby Park right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> and another shot. And the reason I put this in is because of the young lady on the view. Uh, this is Bertha Kelly. Her father was known as Horse Thief Kelly. <laughs> Not because he was a horse thief, but because he dealt in horses and you felt like you had been by the time you dealt with him. He took lots and lots of photos of Bertha, and uh, they're pretty classic. Uh, this is in the heyday of Aspen. This is after 1889. Mm -hmm. We have the Opera House. We have the Hotel. Mm -hmm. so, is that the Clarendon? Really cool. What's interesting is, yes. I don't know if you noticed, this young man is um, colored. Near left. Oh, right. And he's in a, 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 a lot of uh, the Kelly photos. We don't know why. Uh, just a, a, an interesting oddity uh, that you see. Uh, so that's Mill Street. And you can see Mill Street is pretty active. This is before the trolley cars were put in, because there's no trolley tracks yet. So probably about 1889. Now, let's go to Mill Street from the opposite side. That photo was taken from down there. Now you're down by the post office. And you're looking up Mill Street. Here's the Hotel Jerome. The courthouse is over here. The train station is just past here. Uh, that Mesker Iron Works is just behind you. And the train tracks cross just about where the pedestrian light crossing is today in Park Park. That's pretty much the same. Right around the corner, there was a turntable between the post office and Clark's Market where the newspaper stands are. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look, if you could a long time ago, it's been re redone so many times. That's where the turntable was to turn the engines around. So, give you an idea. And uh, quite a perspective of the mining that's happening on uh, Aspen Mountain, uh, where the compromise is located. How about those barrels? What do you think? I don't know what they are. They, they look like empty, uh, I thought they were kegs, but they're not. They look like empty whiskey barrels, or they could be anything. Why they're, they're throwing their uh, is, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would have been a square one. So, so uh, again, we're still on Mill Street, and we're back where we were a little while ago. Remember the building that you couldn't identify that we had, the Al Cigar? We're, we're in the middle of Mill and Main, and we're looking up toward Durant Avenue. Mm -hmm. And look at how busy this is today. So this. This is actually this. Oh no, this is not. This is not me. No. I'm sorry. This is Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah, this is Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah. This is Hopkins. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you an idea of how active it was. Um, they had not undergrounded the uh, wires. And again, this predates the trolley car. The, the trolley car came down the mill and turned on Main Street and went out to the suburbs of the West End. Or, or, or are, yeah. Another photo, same, uh, this is on Main Street. So just to give you an idea of what was going on. Let's take a, another view. I just like these views. You get a lot of them. Quite a transition. Oh, that had the trolley. There's the trolley car. 
There's the trolley car, and you can see the trolley. And uh, this is before it was electrified. It looks, well, is there a horse there? Yeah, it's kind of like the learning Yeah, yeah. A little different look today, isn't it? That's almost the same, same spot. This is about the 1950s. Might have been winter school, so that's why a lot of people stand out there. So that's the LA building there? Yeah. yeah, that's the LA building. In fact, it even says LA. Uh, this is the Sardi Hardware uh, building. Uh, there's the bank still there today. Uh, I'm way behind, aren't I? It is about four. Oh my gosh, I haven't even gone to Hopkins. <laughs> oh. let, me, let me run through Hopkins real quick, okay? Uh, Hopkins Avenue is the one off Main Street, and it's the one that runs right here with the Armory Hall. Um, yeah, we, we can spend. Next year, I'm going to do another thing. <laughs> so Anybody know this building? This is a cute little house. If you go to the Spring Cafe on Hopkins, across the street is the Bird House. Julius Bird came here and he brought the first dairy cow. Not just any dairy cow, but the biggest, fattest, tallest, longest, and whitest dairy cow you ever saw, according to all of the third graders. Um, so uh, today, it's it, it it looked really good back then. Um, it didn't look so good in the 40s. And today it has been restored and lovingly, and it uh, has more of a beautiful gardens outside. So if you're on Hopkins and you go by, it's something you go by every day. But uh, just think about it. Um, yeah, Julius Bird, uh, his daughter uh, did a lot of oral histories with, uh, uh, what was the guy's name? They had a radio George show. George Madsen. George Madsen. They did a radio show. Well, it's snowing outside today, and it's one of those. And I've got uh, Louisa Berg, and she's going to talk about when she grew up in Aspen. <laughs> Off they go, and they talk for an hour, and they recorded it. This is on Hopkins. This building was said to have been the oldest standing building in Aspen you know, up until about the 1920s or so. Uh, but again, it shows the ambitious effort with the size of these lawns. But again, the false front. So this was the uh, a mercantile store uh, at one time. Uh, it, it disappeared. It's at the corner of where the Aspen Brewery is today, where Peaches used to be. Um, it was torn down in the 20s, and look what happened to Hopkins Avenue. This is where the fire station stands today. Uh, at some point, we had a big carnival. They had a parade down uh, Cooper Avenue. We even had a baby elephant at one time. Uh, uh, but uh, when you go past the fire department today, just think of what, what it looked like with and what fun they were having. So the church you can see in the background is Armory Hall. And the tall, tall windows in Armory Hall. So. And then later, uh, it... The ladies built the gazebo, and I don't know why the gas pump is here. It may have just been left over, and I don't know what it looks like. They have a bell in the gazebo? That's the fire pump. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like it. The bell. Yes, the bell is in the town. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's All 3,900 pounds of it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Gillespie bell. It was given to the town in 1886. Uh, this is the same location in 1951. Imagine why they have a foundation there. The thrift shop. No, that's the fire station. They built a cinder block fire station. Look at the brand of the Sardi Hardware. Sardi Hardware has that nice patio uh, over the top and all the pillars in it. That's Surrey Hardware. That's that's the entrance to the Caribou Club. <laughs> Caribou Alley. Yeah. Now, I just thought I'd throw that in. The ISIS theaters over there on the other side. That's the fire department being constructed. 
There you go. That's a newer rendition. This was after a couple more remodels. And the bell is on the roof. Thank you so much. Oh, I, I couldn't pass up. Oh, where that old building was, at the corner, where Aspen Brewery is today, how many of you remember Little Cliffs? Yeah. And I fondly remember the donut tree. Yeah. <laughs> the old donuts were put on the tree for the birds. Wow. Wow. Remember Little Cliffs? Best glazed donuts in 150 miles. <laughs> uh, today that is the uh, 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 Aspen Brewery and the thrift shop is next to it. I just, I had to put that in there. A fond memory. So that's, that's Aspen. Um, there, can I do, I, do I have time to just click through my encore? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm, I was expecting an encore today. Um, <laughs> as long as no one can down right now. We haven't even begun. We could spend the entire night just talking about <coughs> Main Street or any street. Mm -hmm. So I've given you a little tease. Uh, did I tell you there's 20, 30, 50,000 photos? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, there's more folks come back next year. Uh, uh, this or, is, uh, or go online on this, Yeah, this is an interesting office. photo. This is the train station on right? uh, mm -hmm. Dean Street. Mm -hmm. Look at this building. Anybody know? Um, you can't. Citizens Hospital. Citizens Hospital, 1891. It sets up where there's uh, co housing today. Oh, mm -hmm. the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Citizens Hospital. $3 a month. All of your medical was paid. <laughs> Yeah, it, it worked. It didn't matter what happened. Uh, the, the janitor would go down to the river and catch fish. That would be your dinner. Uh, folk, folks threw vegetables and rum. Uh, that was the Citizens Hospital. It was replaced by the modern Citizens Hospital, the modern Aspen Valley. Does anybody remember this? Yeah. This was uh, up uh, off of. Uh, um, Gibson, is it Gibson? Oh, Red Mountain. Yeah, it's on Red Mountain. Today, this is uh, co-housing. So, anybody remember co-housing? This was taken in 1970, and they didn't save it. There are complete blueprints of this. Some some architect came in and drew all of the elevations to scale. So if you're into modern railroading and you want to build a accurate co-lumber, uh, you could do that. Anybody know where this is? The smuggler? No. Well, it belongs to the smuggler. Anybody been to the recycle center lately? No. Uh, <laughs> this is the uh, one of the uh, mills. Uh, this is where Aspen's first electricity was generated, was in this, uh, the older part of this mill. Uh, it started off as a smaller building, and then when the smuggler took it over, uh, they added and it was remodeled. So, uh, in this original building, that's where the first electricity was tested. And, and the track went off to the right and over a, a trestle. Yeah, they went right on the path. This track right here went right on this dead end. So this where, one, where the Eagles Club is. Where the Eagles Club is, there was a bridge that went across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. the skateboarders are right about here, yeah. and the recyclers are right about there. So what's the building up in the right-hand corner across the road? That is part of the smuggler um, the zinc thing. It's part of the smuggler zinc thing. So that would have been DC current or direct? Or they started with DC and then they converted to AC a few years or whatever. Oh. Anybody know where that's at? Direct. Glory Hole Park. Yep, it's Glory Hole Park. Oh, oh that cheated. It was a hole. hole. Here's the here's the fire tower. Today, when you come by, there's a duck pond right here. This is a slope underneath the, the tracks, uh, about 400 feet below, uh, well underneath the depth of the river. The AJ came from Aspen Mountain. And connected underneath the uh, uh, 
uh, original, down original to the city market, on original to about Hopkins, and then turn slightly and headed toward the Molly Gibson on the Smuggler Mountain. So that's the, that uh, stoke caved in, and no, there are no train engines down there. <laughs> we got about three minutes. Four, four cars. Mm -hmm. The tipple? Oh, when we do Durant Avenue, we'll talk more about the tipple. Uh, the tipple nightclub. Uh, anybody go to high school? This was Aspen's high school. This was the DRC Brown Mansion. And when his first wife died, he left the town. And he donated his mansion to the city. The Red Brick Schoolhouse today. This is on the corner of Thanks the Red River Schoolhouse. So it was torn down to make way for the Red River Schoolhouse. This house. This is my favorite house in the West End. I don't have a modern photo of it, but if I took a, if I went out to Fifth Street and uh, I think it's Francis and Fifth. And you take a look, it's, it's blue, 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 blue and it looks exactly oh, like that today. It's blue house. It blue has around, a, it's yeah. blue and it's down around the corner oh. always. And it still looks like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of the interior is still uh, yeah. as it was in the It's story. absolutely amazing. Every time I drive by I go, oh, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't moved it, they haven't put a basement in it, they haven't and, and I, I hit, oh, yeah, as soon as they mark the street, put a porta potty, it's over. Uh, <laughs> uh, go buy that house. It's absolutely gorgeous. And so is the carriage house uh, behind. The carriage house still has the, the little pulley to raise the hay up into the uh, wall. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful. Well, here's the photo. I don't know. I don't know. We don't have a date over here. The house is not. No. Oh, yeah, I could look it up. Yeah, probably about 1889, probably something like that. Well, anyway, that's Aspen, then and now. Yeah. And All right. We just goofed off and have fun. Thank you.